Hi, this is Andy with Montana Energy Services and welcome to part one of our two-part video on how to properly insulate and air seal an attic. And the reason we're making this video is that we see a lot of problems in our work as uh, energy efficiency improvement contractors. A lot of these problems stem from the fact that there is air leakage from the house up into the attic. Uh, such as this where there's penetrations for electrical wires going up into the attic and what happens if there's air leakage into the attic from the warm moist air inside the building going up into a cold attic is that you can get condensation in the, on the roof surfaces which can lead to mold and rot and other problems and here's an example of a fiberglass bat that's been saturated by condensation in an attic and the next slide shows what this can turn into, which is a lot of mold. Um, you can see right down in that corner there where it's dark that there's been a lot of mold in this particular attic. And here's another problem that we see all the time. Even in the best attics, um, the insulation has often been messed up by people walking through it to get to things. And so what needs to happen is a catwalk needs to be built to stop this from happening. So here we are at 541 Rollins Street in Missoula, Montana. Nice old house, probably built in the 20s or 30s. And we're doing a, an energy upgrade on the place. We're doing insulation in the air ceiling and insulation in the attic and putting in a new furnace and a heat recovery ventilation system. And this is what that attic in that house looked like when we first got there. And you can see that there's, you know, maybe five and a half inches of fiberglass, but it's really poorly installed. It's been messed up. There's unsealed electrical penetrations in the ceiling. There's, um, you know, places where there's no insulation at all. Here's an example of a bat that you can showing signs of condensation. You see the stains on the bat, and this is just loosely draped over a heat heat duct um, up in the ceiling. Um, you know, there's no air sealing around the chimney. There's just all sorts of problems and here's another poorly insulated and air sealed piece of ductwork and a patch of where there's no insulation whatsoever. And the upshot of all of this is that there's a tremendous amount of heat loss both by through air leakage and poor insulation in this. And what many contractors would do is just blow more insulation in on top of the bad insulation that was already there but this can actually make the condensation problem worse. So what we always do and the way to do it properly is to actually remove all of the old insulation first. Then we very carefully seal all of the penetrations from the house into the attic, such as the top plates of walls, any electrical penetrations around chimneys and attic access hatches and plumbing vents and all that kind of stuff. Now in this slide you can also see some heating ducts. We try to avoid putting heating ducts in attics if at all possible, but in this case we couldn't avoid so after the ductwork was in place, we built these foam boxes around the ductwork and very carefully air sealed them to ensure that, that we've minimized the amount of heat loss from the ductwork into the attic. And here you can see where we've carefully sealed around the attic access hatch. And you'll see in the videos coming where we built a dam around this to hold the insulation back from the hole in the attic as well. And one other thing we did in this attic was to uh, replace the exhaust fan in the bathroom and I think these slides are fairly self-explanatory as to why we did that. So now we're going to pick up this story uh, on the day that we started blowing insulation in the attic. Uh, today we're busy blowing the attic, blowing, meaning blowing insulation in the attic. and. Uh, well, before we do that, we're going to um, check for air leaks. So you can see right here that we have a, what's called a blower door set up in the front door of the house. What, what this is doing is blowing air out of the house and um, creating a negative pressure in the house, which then sucks air in through air leaks and allows us to find those air leaks so that we can fix them before we blow that insulation in the attic. So here we are inside the house and we have the uh, lower door test running. You can see the uh, 
computer over here is measuring the taking the readings on the test there. Meanwhile, Russ and Josh are up in the attic looking for the air leaks that are happening while the blower door is running and they're sealing those. We'll run up there and take a look here in just a minute. <laughs> All right, so now we're up in the attic and uh, here's Russ and there's Josh with his headlamp on. What, what are you guys up to? So we've, we've got the blower door test running and we're, we're wanting to make sure that all of our air sealing work has been done uh, as good as we want and we're verifying how good of a job we did. So we've, we've spray foamed all the penetrations up here and covered the duct system with, with rigid foam and spray foam. But we're just double checking it and we're finding a few spots that we missed during, during the spray foam and we're, just, we're hitting them with, with the, the small foam guns um, to, make, to make sure we get it sealed up. Cool. So we'll cover some of this in more detail in part two of this video, but um, basically the important things to note are that before the insulation goes in, we have to take out all the old insulation, make sure we've got proper ventilation, make sure that the ductwork is properly insulated and air sealed, make sure that all of the penetrations from the house to the attic are air sealed, build a catwalk so that the insulation doesn't get messed up, and then we can go ahead and blow insulation in the attic. So thanks for watching. That was part one of how to properly insulate an air seal in an attic. And join us for part two or visit us on the web at saveheatnow.com.